What's up, guys? It's Techno Viking Twenty Three coming to you today uh, with my review and thoughts of Destiny Two. Now, I know Destiny Two has been out for about three weeks now, and I might be a little late to the party with this, uh, but I feel like it's one of those games you really do have to kind of play for a while and experience um, all that it has to offer before you can kind of start talking about it. I know there were a lot of YouTubers on two or three days after release talking about, of course, how great Destiny Two was and how. What a great job Bungie did with this game, uh, but I wanted to actually experience everything that was in it before I decided to make my comments on the game. I have some mixed feelings about Destiny 2, and uh, overall uh, the game is pretty disappointing in my opinion. Uh, I'll just come right out and say at the beginning of this review, if you enjoyed the first Destiny, uh, you will most likely like Destiny 2. It's pretty much the exact same thing over again, just repackaged a little bit, and in some cases... Uh, even less to do, which is very surprising, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, if you didn't enjoy Destiny, or if you played Destiny and went away from it for a while in hopes that Bungie might be able to redeem themselves or make a better game with Destiny 2, I'm going to go ahead and right off the bat say just stay away. Uh, they haven't improved things enough to the point where you would want to waste your time uh, playing this game. It's pretty much, like I said, more of the same thing. It's one of the reasons I titled this video Bungie Puts a Lipstick on a Pig because that's pretty much all they've done with Destiny 2. It feels more like Destiny 1 and a half, kind of a, like this could have just been a $30 DLC to the original Destiny. But alas, let's go ahead and start talking about the game. Um, first, I want to get into the story of Destiny 2. Uh, it's been lauded mostly for being an improvement over the first Destiny, which, let's be honest, that's really not that hard. A five-year-old could have written a better story than what was in Destiny. Um, and they've been getting a lot of credit for all the cutscenes they put into it, how the campaign is better. There's a little bit more of a narrative. And I'll agree with most of those things. Uh, it is definitely uh, much better than the original Destiny game. However, it's probably somewhere right along the lines of the Taken King when you talk about the narrative and like the cutscenes and everything. They did do a pretty good job of bringing the Vanguard into the story, and unfortunately most of the story seems to revolve around uh, the Vanguard. Um, you are pretty much a silent Aaron boy like you were in most of the original Destiny, which is another thing that kind of ruins the narrative for me in this game, is the fact that your Guardian does not have one line of uh, voice acting. Uh, at all. So you are essentially the silent guardian. Your ghost will talk to you for you now and then, but you just kind of, you're very mute and you just kind of stand there with this stupid look on your face and all the cutscenes, which is really a letdown um, considering how well Bungie's done this in the past. I think of um, Halo Reach, which was actually my favorite Halo game, how good a job they did with Noble Six with bringing you into the narrative and making you feel like you were part of the story. You had voice lines, you could customize your Spartan to look. How you wanted it to in those cutscenes, and I was hoping they would do something similar with that in Destiny 2, but they have uh, failed utterly at that. If anything, your guardian in Destiny was much more involved in that storyline because you actually did have voice lines. Um, and in fact, if you remember in the first mission where you ask your ghost if your ship will fly, that is more voice acting than you get in Destiny 2, which is a really big letdown. They missed a huge opportunity, and it just feels like they left all that potential uh, on the table. Other than that, the campaign for me largely fell flat, mainly because the middle of it is very boring, and it just feels kind of forced. Now, I will admit the first, the very first mission, which of course you get to play in the beta, so if you play that in the beta, you've already experienced it, was very well done. It was very intense, it was very exciting, it kind of drew you into the story, you know, oh my god, we're starting off real quick, the Cabal are attacking, we're screwed. Uh, it's very, you know, the music is great, uh, as it was in the first game. And then the, the final, I think the mission right before the final boss fight where you fight Gaul, uh, where you go to his giant death machine that's parked out by the sun, you know, his ultimate plan is to destroy the solar system's sun, um, you know, to get rid of everybody that way if he fails at getting a traveler. And there's this, that was probably one of the better stages Bungie has ever designed. There's a lot of environmental threats. You're trying to go through this very intense battle, uh, being swarmed by enemies while also out in space while, like, Literally molten hot fire rain is coming down on you from being so close to the sun and the music is intense and it's, you know, just a really, really well done stage. So the campaign starts off with a bang and it ends pretty well too. The boss fight with Gaul is very flat, it's very easy, it's a big letdown. Um, it's, it's just very uh, lackluster, there's nothing there. But the stage before you fight Gaul is pretty incredible and pretty fun. But other than that, the campaign for the most part 
is a major letdown. I actually enjoyed the uh, the Taken King and Rise of Iron much better than I did the campaign uh, in Destiny 2. And I will say this, even though I think they did a better job than original vanilla Destiny's story, uh, Bungie still has not been able to find whatever it was they had when they used to do uh, the Halo games. Um, neither Destiny holds a candle to any of the Halo campaigns they ever did, in my opinion, personally. And I even think 343's Halo campaigns have been heads and shoulders above anything Bungie has been able to do with the Destiny franchise so far. Um, like I said, they do a good job bringing the Vanguard into the mix, uh, of course, highlighted by Kate Six. Nathan Fillion does an impressive job, as he did in The Taken King, and he's really the only thing holding the story together. He's the only thing worth, I guess, really paying attention to, because he makes some jokes, and he's kind of funny now and then, but for the most part, the campaign largely falls flat, and this is nothing they should be getting credit for, or it shouldn't be, this should not be getting lauded as an amazing improvement, given that this is supposedly a triple A title. Um... You know, I'll, I'll compare it to another big letdown, which was Mass Effect Andromeda, and even for the $60 I paid for Andromeda, I felt the game was a big letdown, but it, its narrative and its story quality was way better than anything that's in Destiny 2. It's just this is a laughing stock here, honestly, that we're talking about Destiny 2 as having a good story. It's really uh, pretty sad. But the campaign is pretty easy. You'll blow through it in, at most, six or seven hours. Um, if you are having trouble you can always run off and do side events to level up but it was really really easy which I think is another major problem with Destiny uh, there's no difficulty sliders there's no way to uh, make any of the missions more difficult uh, you can play them after the campaign is over with some of them you're not actually able to play the campaign again which is kind of interesting you can't go and select the story missions uh, but you actually can play a couple of them through Ikora as a vanguard vendor and they had, they're a little bit more difficult but not not really nothing in this game is difficult even the raid after you learn really how to get through it is pretty easy um, the raid continues to be the best content in destiny which is unfortunate because it seems they only pay attention to about five percent of the overall content in the game to make that a worthwhile experience and while i think they do an excellent job with the raid the raid is not the entire game it shouldn't be what reviews are based on it shouldn't be what opinions are based on and the raid may be excellent, and the raids have always been excellent in Destiny. But again, that is not the game. Uh, that's not what you should always be playing. Um, so just because the raid is good is, does not mean I'm going to think that Destiny 2 is a good game. Uh, I just cannot bring myself to say that. Now, when we get into some of the mechanics of Destiny, everything is pretty good here. It's the same as Des the first Destiny, honestly. Uh, you've got really crisp gunplay. The sound effects are excellent. The guns sound very unique. Uh, which is odd because the guns don't look very unique. There's a lot of recycled, rehashed designs here. The weapons are not nearly as unique as they were in the first Destiny. Uh, and they just throw loot at you like it's going out of style. Nothing feels earned in this game. Everything is kind of like, it's just the same. You just get a pile of loot from everything and it's just a bunch of blue crap you put on your Guardian. And, oh wow, you know, he looks kind of cool. But it's just, um, it's overall a very disappointing experience. But the mechanics are great. There's typical Bungie first person shooter mechanics. It does feel a little bit like they went more towards a Halo control scheme. It does feel a little clunkier and a little slower than the first Destiny where you were jumping around like a madman and had all the verticality. You still have that a little bit here, but it feels toned down and a little bit slower, almost a bit easier. Um, and the enemy AI is still just awful. Uh, like I said, they've, they've actually dumbed this game down from the first Destiny. It's, v it's very easy. Uh, if you die at all during the campaign, it's probably because you're just not very good at the game. There was really nothing difficult uh, until the first couple times you go through the raid and you just don't know what to do. That's really the only time you're going to have difficulty with this game. Even the nightfall strikes are very easy and just, it's like I said, it's almost like they just wanted to make this game strictly for a casual audience. So that's pretty much it for the mechanical side. And then the game does look pretty good, uh, even on the Xbox One. I imagine it's going to look pretty impressive on PC and the upgraded consoles, um, but again, seeing this game on the Xbox One, it makes me wonder why couldn't they just do this with Destiny, you know, why why could this not have just been an expansion to the first game, because I'll be honest, this game does not feel like it gives you enough to do or enough content to be a full-blown $60 to $100 with DLC uh, title at release, there's just nothing to do here, in fact, there's less to do in Destiny 2 than there is to do in the original Destiny, um, you know, by the end of Destiny, the game was actually halfway decent, there were private matches, 
Uh, they had a lot to do with the strikes and the strike scoring and all the different things you could do for loot every week. None of that is in Destiny 2. Um, while the PvP has improved a little bit, it shipped without private matches again, which is mind-blowing. It's just it's baffling how Bungie makes these decisions. Uh, and I guess we'll t we can talk about PvP since I jumped onto that subject. PvP is much better, I think, in this game. It feels more like Halo in terms of PvP experience. Uh, it's more enjoyable. It's a little bit better balanced, but they still have plenty of balance issues, trust me. Um, there's less focus on supers and kind of the cheap kills with grenade spam and everything, and it's more focused on gunplay, which is good. I like to see that switch a little bit, and I've been enjoying PvP a little bit. Uh, but there are still some problems. The maps are entirely too small, uh, and with 4v4, uh, it's just it's just not as fun as it was with 6v6 for some reason. And you also get team killed quite a bit. It's all mostly focused and team shotting. Uh, if you come around a corner, it's three on one, and you're dead before you can even try to shoot back, uh, which is very unenjoyable, and I think that just goes to the maps being too small. Uh, they need to do some some better work in the map department. And I think PvP could actually be really good in Destiny 2, but uh, as of right now, it's still kind of kind of a meh experience, uh, if you know what I mean. It's not something that would hold my attention in this game, and if you're buying Destiny 2 for PvP, you're probably going to be sorely disappointed, and that's not the reason I would think most people are buying this game. Um, but of course Bungie seems to be catering to PvP a little bit, especially with some of the decisions they've made. And we can talk about that really quickly here. Um, even though the game throws loot at you like it's going out of style, pretty much everything is the same. Um, if you get a legendary gun, uh, if you get a certain type of auto rifle, if that auto rifle drops again, it's going to have the exact same set of perks. It might be a little bit higher power level depending on if you're still leveling up or not. But it's going to have the exact same set of perks. So if everybody, five guys in your fire team have the same auto rifle, Unlike in the first Destiny where, you know, everybody might have different perks and their weapon might work a certain way. You know, somebody's scout rifle might have explosive rounds and whatnot. Um, you're not going to have that now. Everybody's going to have the exact same guns. And they did that so they'd have an easier time balancing PvP because Bungie, for some odd reason, is too stupid to realize that you can't do a first-person shooter or an MMO light type game and have the same sets of gear exist across PvE and PvP. It just doesn't work out that way. And that's why pretty much every successful... MMO type game has always gone and had one set of weapons for PvE, one set of armor and gear for PvP, and they've split the sides so that it's easier to balance one without hurting the other. And that's something Bungie still has not learned how to do, even with Destiny 2. It's pretty um, pretty unbelievable that this is a supposed AAA developer, and they just cannot get simple concepts correct uh, with this game. It just blows me away. But PvP is really not much different, just more of an emphasis on gunplay. It's not worth buying the game just to play PvP, if that's what you're thinking about. Um, and really, that's that's really it. Uh, as for the other things they've added to the game, one of the reasons I don't feel like Destiny is worth a full 60 to to $100 purchase is this game, like I said, feels like Destiny 1.5. A lot of the improvements they've made, which I'll give them credit for, is mainly quality of life changes. When you go to an area now on a planet, you have a map and you can quick travel. You don't have to go back to orbit now to move between areas. And that's really cool, but that's, again, a very, very simple concept that is not a reason to buy a $60 game. Uh, that's something that should have been implemented probably in the first Destiny for free. Uh, it's a very simple quality of life change. Um, like, the, the game throwing loot at you might be something people enjoy because it, it feels like you get gear, it's more rewarding, but as I've said, that quickly becomes kind of boring because the stuff that you get is just the same garbage over and over again. Uh, nothing feels earned. Exotics rain from the sky. Even those don't feel earned anymore. They don't feel special. There's, um, I mean, I've only been playing for maybe 12 or 13 hours, and I've got like 17 exotics already. I'm actually going to be doing a separate video talking about how it's way too easy to get uh, exotic gear in Destiny 2. And as I said, it just feels like they have casualized the game far too much, uh, especially when you get around to finishing the campaign and not really having much to do except spamming the same public events over and over and over again, you're just right back um, on the hamster wheel. Now, the first few times you do go through the world zones, they are much better. Um, they're much better than the patrol zones in the first Destiny. Um, you have, like I said, the map, which you can quick travel from place to place. There's NPCs in the patrol zones you can talk to and get missions from. There's adventures and quests and things you can do. There's lost sectors you can explore, which are like little cave areas full of enemies where you can actually f uh, defeat a major enemy and then you get a chest with some loot in it and these are all very interesting and very good at first uh, I will say that when I first went through the game the first playthrough 
uh, it was really kind of fun. It was kind of cool. I'd be going to do a mission, and then all of a sudden I'd see a little cave, and like, oh, let me go explore this lost sector. And I get out of the lost sector, go back to the mission. Oh no, no, there's a public event going on over here. Let me go do this. And it was really engaging. It really brought me into the the, the world, the planet I was on, at first. <laughs> and I keep saying that because once you go through this a couple of times, you quickly realize you're doing the same repetitive garbage over and over and over again. When you get done with the game, when you when you finish the raid, the raid isn't even the most effective way to get gear anymore. Actually, the most effective way to get gear in Destiny 2 is to spam public events over and over and over again. And when it's the same two or three events, and everybody within a day or two already knows how to spawn the heroic event, and it's, it's just rinse and repeat. Same boring content. Play it a million times over again. It's very unenjoyable. And it's surprisingly more unenjoyable than the first Destiny was. That's very hard to believe. Um, but it is. It really is, and it just feels like they put a lot of artificial content into this game. The recent faction event they did, all the special rewards were reskins. Uh, the factions aren't even full vendors. They didn't even ship with the actual game. They were put in with a free update that Bungie wanted all this credit for, that they were doing such a good job with their free updates, and they're bringing you all this free content, which, of course, is just reskin content. Um... They fill this game with a lot of artificial stuff. Like when you first start out, you do not get a sparrow early on like you do uh, in Destiny. You actually have to either get really lucky and get one from one of your bright engrams uh, that you might get early on, or you have to literally wait till you finish the campaign at level 20 and go buy one from um, from Amanda Holiday. Uh, and the reason they do this is to extend your playtime. It's it's very it's painfully obvious when you're playing through the campaign the first time. Uh, there are just spots where you walk and walk and walk and you don't have any enemies to shoot at you just walk and twiddle your thumbs through most of these missions a lot of the strikes you do the same thing you just walk and run through these empty areas for minutes on end uh, and this was maddening playing the campaign where you would in even at the beginning the first mission you go through in the campaign after you get through the cabal attack and you have to walk to the camp to find hawthorne you just walk, and you walk, and you walk, and it's like, this is so boring. Like, what am I doing? And you can tell they're trying to artificially inflate your playtime and force you to stay in this content longer than you want to want to be in it. Reminds me a little bit of how they did the Dreadnought in the Taken King, where they didn't allow sparrows to be used, so people couldn't actually see how small the actual playable area was. They do that a lot in Destiny 2, especially at the beginning. They increase your playtime through these artificial means, um, making you just waste all this time... It's just, it's just boring, you know. I don't know what they were thinking in doing that. It's, it's uh, just seems to be Bungie's mo now to see how much they can stretch this content rather than give you something meaningful uh, to do in the game. So that's my main problem with Destiny Two. There's just a lack of any meaningful content to play here. Um, and I compare it to the last AAA release I purchased, which was Mass Effect Andromeda, which, like I said before, was a huge letdown. And I've made my thoughts clear on that game several times. But at least when I when I look back at Mass Effect Andromeda. I can say I got my money's worth out of it. There were enjoyable moments in the game. There was meaningful content that I went through. There were decent narrative points in the game. And at the end of the day, I spent you know well over 80 hours playing it and got through the game. Um, and I feel like I got my money's worth. I don't ever feel like you're going to get your money's worth with Destiny or Destiny 2. Um, it's just the same mindless grind over and over. It's like a mobile game on console. And in, even with Destiny 2, it's unbelievable how little content they put in this game when you compare it to the first Destiny. Um, I actually fired up the old Destiny the other night and went back in. Um, you know, I, I have two of my, my Warlock and my Hunter. I'm still at like level 399. So I'm trying to get that last little gear piece to say I hit 400 on everybody. But just running around and playing, like even through some of the Rise of Iron content and some of the strikes and things, like... The first Destiny was actually, I feel like, in a very good and enjoyable place at the end of its life cycle. And rather than throw that away, I think Bungie would have been much better off uh, condensing this into a Cabal DLC for like 25 30 bucks, Making these quality of life changes to the original Destiny. Instead of doing this buy a whole brand new game thing after three years, they should have just gone to more of a standard... Um, model like a lot of the MMOs do now where they bring out a $30, $40 expansion every so often that puts a lot of major things into the game. They would have hit a home run with this if they had just done that because being a huge critic of Destiny and Bungie, like I said, going back towards the uh, release of Destiny 2 and playing through the old Destiny, it was a lot more enjoyable than it was when it first came out. They had made a lot of improvements to it and the game was actually quite fun for me. Um, 
but then even comparing that to Destiny 2, like I said, Destiny 2 is just it's just so boring. There's just nothing to do. Uh, you just wait till the weekly reset and run the same stuff over and over and over again. I mean, the PvP has been improved a little bit, but, but really there's no private matches. There's no basic features. It's the same crap over again with Bungie and Activision. They just continue to do this over and over again, and unfortunately they do have an army of gullible gamers and YouTubers who will continue to keep them relevant. It's just like Call of Duty. People complain about Call of Duty all the time and how it's such a meaningless experience, and then it sells like hotcakes every single year. Um, I think Activision has found that with Destiny. Uh, I'm sure this game made a ton of money. I just don't see it, though. So, honestly, if you guys haven't bought this game yet, if you didn't like the first Destiny, stay away. <laughs> stay away. Um, if you like the first Destiny, you're going to enjoy this game because you like the first Destiny. It's the same grind and everything over and over again. It's polished up a little bit better, and the grind is a little bit easier, and it just throws loot at you. Uh, what I call it, welfare loot. You don't feel like you earn anything in this game. If you like that kind of play style in the first Destiny, you're going to love Destiny 2. Um, but as for me, I just I cannot recommend anybody pay full price for this game. Uh, this game, if you pay 60 to to $100 for this game and all the DLC, you're a sucker. You're a sucker. And I'm glad I didn't pay that for it. Um, a lot of people have been making some snippy comments in my videos. About, oh, you thought you weren't buying Destiny 2. Um, I didn't buy Destiny 2. I borrowed it from... A friend of mine uh, who was nice enough to let me borrow his copy and play the game for a while to get a feel for it so I could do a review for my channel. But, um, yeah, I you know, maybe in a year or two when this comes out for $30 and all of the DLC is out, maybe it'll be worth it. Kind of like when they did the first Destiny when you could buy it for 30 bucks and get everything with it. But for 60 to $100, not knowing what they're going to have for DLC, but I'm pretty much guessing it's going to be the same kind of limited content they did with the original Destiny. I just can't, in my right mind, recommend this game to anybody. Um, you know, obviously people can say, it's my money, I can do what I want. Of course you can. Um, but you're not getting good value here for your 60 to $100. You just are not. Um, if anything, it's really sad to say Bungie has not redeemed themselves. They've actually gone backwards. Um, from the first game, and that's really shocking. It's really, really hard. And that's I'm not even going to get into some of the narrative plot holes that were in the story of this game, like why your guardian seems to be the only person smart enough to get their light back, and why they wouldn't just fly all the other guardians to the European dead zone to recharge their powers uh, right off the bat. And uh, I guess that's one thing I'll talk about real quick before I before I end this review is um, they had a chance to make the story really, really good, especially at the beginning, because the first stage, as I said, was really fun to play through, but then you get to the end of it where you get stripped of your light by Gaul when he imprisons the Traveler. There's this really interesting scene that you go through that reminds me a lot of uh, towards the end of Mass Effect 3 when you get shot with a Reaper Beam and you have to sort of limp towards the, the end of the stage to get up into the, um, the Crucible to finish the game. Um, and you're kind of limping through the city and there's cabal all around you and you have to be careful because you can get killed actually. You can't be resurrected anymore and you're low on health and you don't have any weapons. And you kind of sneak through the city uh, to get out with you and you finally find your ghost who can heal you but then you still can't be resurrected so you literally can't die. And it goes through a sequence where you do get attacked a few times by some enemies and all you have is like this weak little pistol and this weak little submachine gun and you kind of have to fend them off and there's there's almost like a little bit of tension and fear about oh you know what I could die here I could actually die in a game that's very easy I might die for once um, but you instantly lose that because literally like 10 minutes later you're getting your light back and you're you become like the ultimate badass guardian who's gonna save the you know the chosen one by the traveler and you literally cannot be killed by anything the rest of the game uh, even the, the final boss fight with Gaul you essentially have unlimited, unlimited super um, that entire fight so he can't touch you you literally cannot die the game is way too easy but that narrative moment for me right there i was i was getting drawn in like okay they've got something here we have an interesting campaign finally where you know the guardians aren't invulnerable anymore and you have this fear of death now and you have all these interesting things you could delve into but then literally 30 seconds later it's gone they just throw it all out so you can become mr badass and go kick everybody in the face and and save the day which again kind of you know, caters to the more casual audience who just wants to feel feel good about themselves, uh, feel like they're getting loot, feel like they're they're winning and beating everybody. Um, so that was really the point where it went off the rails right very early in the get go. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna probably start rambling here, so it's probably about time I end this 
uh, review. It's more my thoughts of Destiny 2 and why I don't think, uh, you know, most of you guys know how I feel about this. And uh, most of you guys have similar viewpoints to my own, so I imagine a lot of you will be passing on Destiny 2. But either way, you know, if you guys are playing Destiny 2, let me know your thoughts on it down below. Um, it's funny because I've even noticed some of the people on Reddit and even some of the more diehard YouTubers are kind of already seeing that there's not much to do here. They're already kind of seeing that this is a very shallow experience, especially compared to even the first Destiny, which is saying quite a lot. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how much staying power Destiny 2 has, especially since there are going to be some pretty decent games hopefully coming out later this year. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say anything's going to kill Destiny because everybody said that for the last three years and nothing ever managed to. And that's kind of what's sad about gaming in general and speaks to, uh, I guess, AAA games of this generation right now is the fact that Destiny is probably at its best a 6 or 7 out of 10 game and is treated as if it's absolute gold, like it's the best thing that ever came out. It's just unbelievable how they get away with this and how AAA gaming in general has just fallen on such hard times with so many lackluster releases and nothing able to challenge a boring and shallow game like Destiny uh, to knock it off its pedestal. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll see you again next time.